Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. E is Euler's number. We're going to be solving e to the power x equals x to the power e. So we're going to be looking for x values that satisfy this. I know at this point, you probably have an obvious solution for this equation, but we're going to be solving it algebraically. And we're going to be using a little bit of calculus as well. Okay, let's see how this goes. First of all, notice that e is a positive number, e is greater than zero, so e to the power x is also going to be greater than zero, which implies that the x value we're looking for needs to be positive. So we don't, we don't really care about uh, zero or negative values because they're not going to satisfy our equation. Okay, so we're going to be looking for positive values for x. Let's go ahead and ln both sides. When, whenever you have e as a base, it makes sense if you ln both sides. And by definition, ln of a number a is the logarithm of a with base e. Okay, so let's go ahead and ln both sides. ln e to the power x equals ln x to the power e. This is a really good way to get rid of the exponents. And then we're going to move the powers x ln e equals e ln x. Great. Since ln e means log e with base e, this is going to become 1. And so from, from here, we're going to get an equation x equals e times ln x. We no longer have any powers. This equation, obviously, is a non-standard equation because we have logarithms on one side and we have a polynomial or a linear function on the other side. It's uh, by no means a standard equation. But let's put everything on the same side. So we have to use a non-standard method here. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and write this as x minus e ln x equals 0. So that's basically the equation we're going to be focusing on. And this equation actually pretty much has the same domain as before because notice that ln function is only defined for positive x values and we already have that requirement. So x is greater than 0 still holds. Okay, so we're going to be looking for x values, but how do we handle such a non-standard equation? So we're going to be using... Uh, calculus here. So let's go ahead and set this function equal to something. Let's say, I don't know, f of x. Suppose f of x is equal to x minus e ln x. All right. So what am I going to do with this? Well, I'm going to differentiate this. My goal is to find how this function beha behaves and possibly come up with a basic graph of it, like a sketch of the function so that I can look at its behavior because that's going to give me information about possible roots. So the derivative is very easy. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x, but e being a constant, it's just going to be e times 1 over x, which is e over x. So the derivative of f is 1 minus e over x. And we're going to proceed, proceed with uh, setting that equal to 0 because we want to find the critical values so we're going to set the f prime equal to 0. And from here we get e over x equals 1. And this implies that x equals e. Okay, great. Now, x equals e is a critical value. So it's possible that it becomes a negative or a positive value. But we have to check. We're going to make a table to check this. But before that, let's go ahead and arrange this f prime a little bit. So we can write it as a quotient. That way we're going to know all the roots because we only got this by solving for x, but we have to make sure that there are no other values. Well, when you write it like this, by making a common denominator, you get uh, a quotient. So let's go ahead and look at where uh, the derivative is positive and where the derivative is negative. So for that purpose, we are going to make a table. Let's go ahead and make a table. And the table is going to look like this, x values here and the f prime is going to be here. So first of all, we're going to mark kind of like a number line. We're going to be using the method of intervals. Uh, we're going to be, um, you know, marking the uh, points where this function uh, has zeros, both the numerator and denominator. Obviously, the denominator is not supposed to be zero, but that's where the sign changes. So we get zero and e from here for x values, for which this function might change the sign. And since we don't have any perfect squares, it is going to change sign at every root. Okay, how is that going to be? Uh, well, this is kind of like as x approaches infinity, and this is kind of like x approaches negative infinity. So our x values are going to range uh, between negative infinity and positive infinity, in other words, all real numbers. But how do you find out whether 
f prime is positive or negative here. So one way to do, do it is by looking at the coefficients of x. They're all positive. So at uh, infinity, it's supposed to be positive. Or you can just plug in some values. Suppose replace x with 5. Well, if you replace x with 5, for example, f prime of 5 is going to be 5 minus e over 5. As you know, e is less than 5. So this is a positive quantity. You can also test some values. But no matter what you do, you're going to get that between e and positive infinity, f prime is positive. And then between 0 and e, if x is less than e, notice that this is going to be a negative quantity while this is a positive quantity. So we're going to get a negative sign. And if x is less than 0, obviously, you're going to get positive again because both the top and the bottom are going to be negative. But we don't have to worry about it because remember, when we first looking at our equation, we had this requirement that x is greater than 0. So I don't really care about the negative values or 0. So we're going to forget about this totally and only focus on 0 to e and e to positive infinity. Now, what does this tell us? Well, if f prime, and I can kind of extend this, you know, table to include f of x. And if f prime is negative on an interval, as you know, the function is decreasing. If f prime is positive, the function is increasing. What does this tell you? This tells you that at x equals e, our function has a minimum. Great. So f of x, let's write this down. f of x has a minimum, minimum at x equals e. Great. Well, let's see what that value is by substitution. You know, substitution is very important. Our function is x, x minus e ln x. So let's go ahead and replace x with e. We get e minus e ln e, which is ln e equals 1. So this is e minus e, which is equal to 0. Wow, that's interesting. So we have actually a solution, and this shouldn't be surprising because you probably guessed at the very beginning that x equals e would be a valid solution because e to the power e equals e to the power e. That makes sense, right? Okay, cool. So x equals e from here is going to give us uh, a solution. Why? Because it makes our function equal to 0. Remember, we were looking for a solution to this x minus e ln x equals 0 because this is equivalent to our equation pretty much because it has the same domain. So x equals e seems to be a solution. But are there any other solutions? So we're going to be looking at this function from a different perspective. So let's go ahead and take a look at the limit. Now what happens if x approaches, by the way, since x is only defined for positive values, I mean the function is defined for positive x values, I'm going to take the limit as, if, as x approaches 0 from the right of x minus e ln x. Now notice that the function, the graph of ln x looks like this. So as x approaches 0, zero from the right, y values approach to negative infinity. So this, these values are going to approach negative infinity. As x approaches 0 from the right, this is going to approach 0. So we kind of have something like 0 minus negative infinity or 0 plus infinity. In other words, the limit is going to approach infinity. As x approaches 0 from the right, our y values are going to approach positive infinity. What about uh, as x approaches infinity, what's going to happen to our graph, right? Well, if x approaches infinity, obviously, you're going to notice that x is going to grow faster than ln x, right? Obviously. And this is going to approach positive infinity. This is also going to approach infinity, but at, at a slower rate. So our limit is going to be positive infinity again. So we have a function that makes a minimum at x equals e and otherwise approaching infinity on either end. So our graph is pretty much going to look like this. As x approaches, so at e, by the way, this is the graph of uh, x minus e ln x. And at e, we have a minimum, and the y value at that point is 0. So you have, we, have, we have an x-intercept, or kind of like touch and go. And our function is going to look like this. Pretty much, I mean, the curving might be a little different depending on how accurate you want to graph it, but that's pretty much roughly what our graph is going to look like. And this shows us what? We have only one solution to this equation, and we can write this as a result, x equals e. So basically, I'm trying to say that from here, if x does not equal e, then f of x is... Uh, then f of x is always going to be positive, which means it can never be 0. So x equals e is the only solution for the equation e to the power x equals x to the power e. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, 
Be safe, take care and bye bye.